mode all of you out in the hive just uh, getting my uh, set up a little closer there we go all right well thanks for tuning in once again um, we are on uh, our eighth class of ten it's hard to believe the the weeks have just flown by for um, for this prayer course um, Hope you all had a chance to check out the examine and and see how that um, went and check out the materials related with the examine. Um, we had some good feedback this morning about the practice and um, so again, yeah, there's still time to go through and check that out and um, it, it was a larger series last year so if you ever want an opportunity to go and check out more, you can check out more on our website at the Hive Apiary. Um, so today, our, uh, or this evening, our topic is centered around um, the, oh, sorry, uh, so today our um, topic is centered around listening and discerning. We um, spent quite a bit of time talking about what we lift up in prayer, um, but if prayer is this relational thing, uh, with with us and God, um, where do we uh, have room to have the conversation, and where do we have room to also listen and consider what uh, God may be saying to us, and and where God may be pointing towards uh, pointing us in prayer. Um, listening, it it's something that I think personally I know is is good to do, but um, I, I have to be, I always have to be intentional about it. I always have to keep coming back around and, and being intentional about how well I'm listening, even in my relationships with, with other people. Um, we had this exercise when I worked at camp where we would um, be told to uh, listen as a partner would share about some kind of memory. Maybe that was a favorite teacher or um, a favorite family memory or, or something of those of that kind uh, to listen and to be able to observe um, not just what they said but also um, their expressions and the emotion behind the words and, and that exercise was really eye-opening and um, seeing just how far I have to go in being able to listen in every everyday life to be able to quiet my own mind in order to listen to what someone else has to say and I, and I realize um, quite a bit that even as intentional as I try to be um, I always need to practice to quiet my own mind when I'm listening to what someone else has to say and fully taking in what they have to say before thinking of what I would say next because um, even in the noise of our, my own mind, if I'm thinking about what comes next, I'm not truly tuned into what someone else is saying. And so um, I think that that's something we can transfer into thinking about prayer is um, how much are, are we sort of praying and lifting up our own petitions, but then how much are we emptying our minds and um, being, I guess you could say, empty vessels to, to receive what God has to share. Um, so another, another piece of this is, is listening and, and, and not just being listening, not just listening, but being very open to possible um, answers to prayer, which brings up the, the idea of what is an answered prayer? Um, if, if we are looking for the, a specific answer to a specific petition, I sort of close in, um, our view of, of how prayers might be answered. And, um, and, uh, if, if the, if the result to prayer that we are looking for is the only one that seems to count, well, we might close ourselves off to where God might be at work in the world. And so um, I think through uh, where is it that we can go? Where is it that we can turn to when we're trying to consider 
and think about um, how God might answer prayer. It's a, it's a very tricky thing because, um, you know, sometimes prayers or sometimes prayers don't seem to be answered or sometimes the, the way that things turn out uh, when we've been in prayer isn't what um, we were hoping for. That it can be tricky yet it can be difficult because sometimes tragedy that we hoped would not happen does happen. And, and then the question is, well, well God, what happened with that? <laughs> and um, where was God in the midst of, of that as well? So this, this listening is, is, um, can be uh, very much easier said than done. But where are some places that we can go to think about how God might be answering prayer? So one place to, to look is, is in the scriptures, in, in, in the Bible, um, looking through passages and seeing how God uh, joins us in the midst of whatever's going on, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of loss, in the midst of joy, in the midst of questioning and doubt. Where, where does God show up in the midst of those places? That scripture can be a place where we look at, well, how has God acted before? And what does that say in terms of how God might act again? Um, I also look at, um, or look towards trusted friends and community and, uh, particularly spiritual community because I may have my own views and my own biases and my own thoughts, but when I'm in community, that, um, view broadens. And so to, have the gift of diverse community is even better to have that view broadened and have other people's perspectives as to where God might be at work. Community is a very powerful place to find that. And that um, I think God works through community and gives us that gift of what is God up to in the world. And so community is a very special and uh, valuable place to look um, when we're listening and discerning how God is at work in the world. Um, and I also look at a very specific, um, to introduce maybe a more concrete practice or a specific practice to try um, to think about uh, the practice of Lectio Divina. This is one that I'm uh, particularly drawn to because it's a prayer practice that um, doesn't just call for me to lift up what's on my heart and mind, but it calls me to sit in stillness and sit in silence and meditation, and it helps um, me come to a place of quieting my mind and seeing um, what happens from there. Uh, it gives me a place to contemplate and, and make space for silence, which is I think um, incredibly valuable when we're trying to figure out um, where God might be speaking. So uh, there's some step, it's steps to Lectio Divina. Different people might practice it in slightly different ways and different styles and um, there's some different preferences but there's a very, I guess the basic layout starts with um, reading a passage of scripture. It can be a random passage of scripture. Hey, Hillary, good to see you. Um, it could be a random passage of scripture. It could be part of a daily lectionary. It could be you decide, I want to read hmm, a psalm a day, um, uh, something along those lines. But um, I personally take, um, I personally have a, a book that has short, maybe two to three verses uh, in it per day. Um, it's called Bread for the Day, and, and that's that's a good place to start. Very short passage. And um, I uh, would take that, and you read it, and then some people will read it repeatedly, or um, they'll read it, and then meditate on it, and then read it again. But there is that element of reading a passage of scripture that um, God is present in the Word, and so reading that passage of Scripture is a place to start. And then meditating on it, um, and sitting in stillness with that uh, passage of Scripture, 
Um, and I, I don't even try to um, keep my mind completely blank, but I do try to um, look at, oh, it's just, um, Common Prayer has a great app for short daily pieces of scripture. That's from Hillary. So um, I'll have to check that out. We might have to post links uh, for that later on. But um, so another good source there. Uh, but then in, in getting to meditating, um, uh, I try to personally, I tend to think, you know, what's the word that jumped out at me? What What's what is the word that jumped out at me or what's a phrase that jumped out at me or what's a question that um, tugs at me after reading that passage that clearly reading that passage brings up something in me that it's not necessarily oh I'm thinking about what I've got to do after this or I've got, to, I've got my list of things that I'm pondering but some kind of train of thought that I have, that I wouldn't have had, had I not pulled out scripture and read that passage of scripture. Um, so meditating and letting some of those thoughts sort of bubble up and rise to the surface, those thoughts that you wouldn't have um, had you not read that scripture to begin with. And think about why did that scripture come to me? Um, and then to pray, to uh, perhaps take those questions, take those thoughts, take those um, phrases that stuck out and find some way to lift them up in prayer. Maybe that's to say, God, I don't know what this means for today, but maybe help me to carry this with me. Um, or maybe it does bring up a concern. Maybe this meditation does connect to something else that's been going on in our lives and it does connect to a concern that we can lift up to God. Um, so then to pray uh, based on that meditation that has come up because of the scripture that you read. And then I like the fact that um, this practice of Lectio Divina, at least um, in the way that I've, I've practiced it, invites us to contemplate after um, you have prayed that it leaves room for silence and contemplation after praying, that our words for the day, uh, our words and our prayers are not the last word, but that there's yet more room for silence, that there's yet more room to sit in stillness and um, continue to listen um, and then contemplate what has happened over the course of that whole practice. Um, so that's a very basic uh, layout of Lectio Divina. And um, if, if you have other ways that you uh, add your own spin to it or you've seen it practiced in other ways that really help you, I would invite you to add that um, and comment on that as well. And um, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need, spa definitely need space to... Um, I don't think we give ourselves enough space to let things sink in. I don't think we give ourselves enough time to really process and um, really let things sink in um, and really hold the most meaning that they can. And so um, if there's ways that you practice this and it allows us, allows you to let, let, let that word further soak in and sink in and stay with you through the course of the day. I'd be interested to, to know that as well. But um, we will be uh, posting some questions throughout the week um, because listening and discerning uh, and thinking about where is God speaking, us, speaking to us in our prayer practice is, is a pretty weighty topic. Um, and not to mention when we think about, well, what are, what exactly are answered prayers? What are, are there unanswered prayers? Um, we brought up some pretty weighty questions over the course of this video. And so, um, to wrestle with that takes, um, more than just a, uh, little time slot. And so, um, I'll be posting some, uh, questions throughout the week and you can let those 
uh, sink in and ponder them and carry them with you and then uh, be able to uh, post some conversation over the course of the week. I'll try to be a little bit better about that. I um, sometimes get caught up in my own work for the day and um, don't always get to post, but I'll try to be diligent with that this week. So keep an eye out and we um, look forward to hearing from you. And um, as always, thank you so much for joining us on this journey in our prayer practice. It's been awesome to explore both with uh, this online community and with the in-person community. And um, if you're new to this, uh, welcome. We're glad to have you. And um, there's always room to catch up and um, get some uh, catch up and, and see the videos. You can either scroll back in the group um, thread or you can go online to thehiveapiary.com and you can see the past um, videos that have been posted under the attendant page. So um, it's uh, been great to talk with you this evening and um, take care. We'll be hearing from you soon. Bye. <laughs>